Welcome to Missing Artwork, a show that lets artists behind your favorite album art tell their story and experience in making the iconic image of the music you love. I'm your host, Michael Paul Escanuelas, and today we're talking to R.N. Taylor, the illustrator behind the artwork for Los Campesinos' latest album, Six Scenes. Times have changed, and sometimes it's difficult to keep up with everything happening all around us. We wake up and look to our phones to find several alerts of news updates that bring shock, horror, and disbelief. Despite whatever your stance may be, it's easy to agree these last few years have been unpredictable. With endless information available at our fingertips, it's easy to become overwhelmed and just want to disconnect. That idea is what helped Taylor develop the album art for six scenes. Taylor who plays guitar, keyboard, and has been doing design for the band since 2009, developed the artwork following the events that led up to the Brexit vote that took place in the UK in June of 2016. The artwork for Six Scenes uses a style similar to what you would find in the art of Adrian Tomina, an artist that Taylor takes influence from. With an overlay of pink and magenta color tones, the cover depicts a young woman collapsed on the floor of a supermarket milk aisle. Surrounded by the mundane atmosphere of the supermarket, the young girl seems content to be completely and impulsively disconnected from the world around her. In this episode, Taylor discusses how politics influenced the concept of Six Scenes artwork and goes into detail of his eclectic illustration process. My name is, uh, is Rob Taylor. Um, I normally go under the uh the sort of the moniker of rn taylor uh, mostly because being called robert taylor on the internet tends to be something of a crowded marketplace i play uh, guitar and keyboard and um i do some vocals in uh uk indie band los campesinos and i also um i'm an illustrator and designer and i i do uh, a lot of artwork for los campesinos and uh for you know other clients within the music industry and that's uh <laughs> Proving himself as a valuable asset to the band, Taylor wears many hats in Los Campesinos. I joined in about 2009, I think. So I've, and, and since then, I've, I've pretty much done all of the artwork, the um, album covers and the, and, you know, merch designs and posters and, and the schmuck that actually does the art as well. It, it kind of becomes tricky compared to other arrangements where I would normally uh, you know be employed by a client just as an illustrator or something and answer to an art director and then you know like there's a sort of fine the project has sort of finite bounds whereas when I'm doing it myself it tends to take over my life but it's also a really interesting exciting way of getting to do and try loads of different things and sort of really stretch myself in a way that would nev- I'd never really get to do if, um, with, a, with a regular client. And um, I have a very, very understanding and sympathetic and supportive <laughs> group of uh, bandmates who, uh, who are sort of happy to, to let me <laughs> most of the time kind of like, you know, just um, express myself. The concept of six scenes began during the band's recording process. Um, we were out in uh, Portugal in a, in a small village um, in the mountains called uh, Amarant, and it's it's kind of um, about a hundred miles east of Porto, um, and it was just in- incredibly hot. And the whole time we were out there, we were following the foot the sorry, following the uh, the bulletins from back in the UK about uh, Brexit. And uh, of course, at the time, like uh, it seemed pretty nailed on that Britain would stay in the EU and would would not vote to leave. It had been a really, really just unspeakably egregious campaign by the the Leave side um, uh, in which, um, you know, sort of nationalist, racist tensions had been drummed up and uh, a, a, an MP called Joe Cox had been shot as a, I, I, I think, a, a direct result of the, the sort of um, uh, rhetoric that was being used. And uh, it was it was shocking and, and appalling, and of course, <laughs> you know, uh, this was still uh, this, this was back when things were a little bit more normal, I suppose. So <laughs> the uh, so we we kind of assumed normality would prevail, and that, and of course, uh, we were watching with horror as you know the sort of the early results came in, and it turned out oh actually no, it 
you know, this isn't going to go quite as, uh, as, as, as swimmingly as we imagined. And then, of course, by the morning, it was just, you know, we were just dumbstruck. It was horrifying. And, you know, everybody had this feeling that, you know, we, we'd left the UK and it was almost like we didn't recognize it anymore. We didn't remember it. We couldn't even imagine what it would be like, you know, this, this sort of uh, the idea that you don't recognize your, the people you think you know and you live with and you don't understand how intelligent, good people <laughs> that you know who, you know, from, like, friends of your parents or whatever, that, that they could possibly be seduced by this sort of campaign based entirely on really, really very obvious crude lies. Reflecting on the events that took place during the band's recording session, Taylor dug deeper into the cultural phenomenon of the events going on in his home country. Anyway, yeah, it was just, uh, it was shocking, basically. And so we had this sort of, this, the, 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 the lyrics that Gareth, our uh, lead singer, who he writes all the lyrics, and he, he, was begin, he sort of took some of that and put it into, you know, a couple of songs because he was still writing when we were out there. And he, we had one song uh, called The Fall of Home. And then some of the other songs that kind of he'd already recorded suddenly started to take on a bit more of a, a different feeling for us. And this idea of six scenes kind of, uh, suddenly kind of began to uh, crystallize a, a, a little bit and that, that became a sort of front runner for a, an album title and then it was, uh, as things went on I sort of had, you know, began to sort of construct this idea of basically because a lot, a lot, one of the big themes of the album is, is depression and this sort of like almost this uh, med- medication and, and sort of treatment for depression but also this sort of maybe a, a, sort of a wider sense of kind of societal cultural depression and, and this sort of almost the kind of weird sort of mental illness that the world seems to be or at least the western world seems to be kind of experiencing right there's so this sort of strange self-harm and when further exploring the album's heavy themes taylor turned to a television classic to help shape his artwork i sort of had this this image of you know george michael the, the michael sarah character from arrested development when uh, I think he's asked out a girl and she's rejected him and he just goes and I think they, they play like the peanuts lick and he just sort of lies flat in his face on the living room floor. And I sort of, <laughs> I kind of had this feeling of like, that's sort of what everybody's doing <laughs> now really where it's sort of this, this, this feeling of that basically they've won and it's all over. Like, you know, they've made this irreversible decision and the factors that have cr- contributed to to this decision being made, we're never going to get rid of them, and, and you know things will only get worse from here. And it, so I just had this image of kind of like people lying flat in their faces, and sort of you know this idea of basically just sort of total abandon and giving up and and apathy. And there was there was a sort of direction I began to explore with it a little bit. Taylor needed to balance several human emotions to convey the right message with his artwork. Um, I like the idea of, of sort of making it look almost like a kind of 90s uh, MTV cartoon or something and creating these, these quite sort of, I don't know, sort of re- relatively simple scenes. I want there to be a sort of an obvious humor there and you know, to, to, to elicit a, an emotional response, but uh, it's a sort of be not troubling because obviously the key fact is I felt when I was doing you know some development sketches was that drawing young people lying on the floor particularly is quite it's quite difficult to make it look like they're not dead or (laughs) in trouble or having been assaulted or something and so like that was a big challenge and so like yeah the, the the key was really to sort of depict them in a way that was make them look vacant and bored, you know, eyes rolling, sort of totally bummed out by the world, but also totally in control of their situation and, you know, with this kind of abandon, but safe in a way. By developing his craft through his work, Taylor created his own unique process for his artwork. I think I probably have a, a slightly uh, idiosyncratic process in, in that I don't have like a conventional design education background and so I've never really been very good at methodically developing ideas in a sketchbook uh, with notes and sort of you know like you know I, I see other people's sketchbooks and I think god I wish I could 
do that. But I mean, what what often ends up happening is I I sort of I will just kind of it sounds terrible, but like basically uh, often ideas come to me in almost fully formed, and I I sort of I have to feel emotionally sort of invested and connected to them in order to have the sort of confidence and certainty to sort of direct my energy <laughs> towards that. So it's it's a it's a pretty I mean, it's a very difficult thing for other people to observe because it it's it's difficult to explain my <laughs> the sort of the where I'm at in the process and things and and I totally uh you know my band are very patient patient and you know most of my other clients are very patient but um I uh yeah so so often it, it, it maybe appears chaotic to everybody else and yeah sort of I kind of could, could kind of see basically the concept in my mind's eye <laughs> Like many illustrators, Taylor takes advantage of the modern technology available to artists. Recently, I, I bought a, a, a secondhand Wacom Cintiq, really enormous one, which is uh, really, really heavy. And uh, that's been an absolute revelation because it's, it's sped up the process an awful lot. And it, it sort of opened up new kind of avenues that I'd never really thought of before. And, um, you know, in, in a weird sort of way, sadly, <laughs> I actually find the... Uh, some of the kind of brush effect actually looks more like a brush than an actual brush does. So, I mean, all, all of this artwork was done on the Cintiq. I think, I think you can definitely tell, but actually the line work is better than, than I think it, it def, definitely much better than it would have been with a brush or a, a sort of a dip pen. For Taylor, this project required an exploration of the human body to create the scenes in his head. I set about finding reference images and I kind of ended up getting different people to pose. I think my girlfriend posed for some of them. Because I think like one of the things I was finding is that in the early attempts to to draw, particularly the the image on the front cover, I was finding because she's lying on a flat surface, it was very different to drawing somebody, particularly in the style. I'm, uh, it, it kind of looked like she was sinking through the floor because I was sort of drawing somebody as if they were kind of standing up, basically. And so, yeah, that was a... <laughs> That was, that was an early problem I was finding. And then also just, just the sort of natural mechanics of the human body are so amazing but difficult to draw. Like uh, I spent quite a long time trying to make sure that the, the pose wasn't too mechanical and appropriate for the project. Or not. You know, I, I, I did one definitely where I was trying to make it look more orchestrated, like, a, like you know, that planking meme, basically. And of course, one of the problems with that was it looked like she was doing the planking meme. And I thought maybe <laughs> that would be, maybe it would sound like we were kind of dissing the planking meme by calling it a sick scene, which is like absolutely not what we're doing, you know, because we're very pro planking as a band. And I'd like to make that very clear. Another thing that was really interesting was the eyes, basically, which I found was the whole, the sort of element that basically completely set the entire kind of emotional indicator of the, the, the sort of figure's state of mind. Yeah, I, I, I sort of was trying to sort of make sure that they look bored and, and sort of, but as if they were sort of a mid-eye roll, basically, which is harder to depict than you'd expect, maybe. But, uh... Colors were an important asset early on in Taylor's process. The objective from the, the off was to, well, well, basically to, to kind of have as little color information as possible to make it sort of a bit more routine and to feel like you were under neon lights, perhaps. Well, I was, I was very attracted to pastel shades that I think they're kind of cool at the moment. I've noticed uh, seen on the design blogs, uh, you know, it's really blowing up pastel shades. <laughs> like, uh, and I, you know, maybe, maybe it was my, my attempt to be cool. I don't know. I think I think I'm cool now. I think I did it. I think I I made it. Yeah. In the end, I, well, the, initially I was the plan was to make it sort of uh, navy blue and, and and pink, and it it looked just too kind of jazzy or something. You know, there's too much going on, and the um, and I, I I sort of when I actually just changed the whole thing to just uh, shades of this sort of magenta. It was. Uh, I think that's one of, one of the things I find interesting about choosing colors, where I, I always. Just routinely, I pick the color I I like and think is appropriate. I desaturate it by like fifty percent, and and normally that seems to sort of give a much more pleasing effect. It's it's all about perception and and the the mix and things. And of course, 
the background looks white, but it's actually a sort of pale suggestion of pink that kind of makes the record look a little bit more, dare I say, analog in <laughs> like a little bit old, you know, vintagey, you know, a bit like the sort of thing you might get at Urban Outfitters, you know, like the cool kids do, right? Branching away from the photography focus of the band's last couple albums, Taylor took a more personal approach with six scenes. The result is a unique piece that truly captures the feeling of living in an unpredictable modern world. Uh, in a way, I mean, I, I, I think I always kind of wanted to do something like this. And I think because it's my drawings, it is a lot more personal to me. And so a lot of all-nighters and feeling kind of crazed and not leaving the house for like two weeks. And it's really healthy, actually, like the way I work, but everyone should do it. And so, so I think like at the end of it, I, I sort of did it and I, I sort of finished, sort of fulfilled the technical requirements that I'd <laughs> laid out at the beginning. And, but, but, you know, I didn't really know if I liked it or not particularly. I've been kind of really heartened actually, because since I, I, we got the, the vinyl back the other day from the, uh, the, the factory and it, it, I'm really pleased with how it looks, actually. Um, I'm becoming one of those people who likes their own work, which is, you know, gross. It's, no, I haven't quite, I am quite, uh, you know, like, I'm, uh, I may even put it on social media, perhaps as a kind of, some kind of uh, promotional thing for my, <laughs> for myself. Missing Artwork is a collaboration of Chris Lantinen and myself, Michael Paul Escanuelos. We are part of the Modern Vinyl family of podcasts, which represents other great shows like Pilot Study and Vinyl Crawl. Check out modern-vinyl.com to see the latest vinyl news, features, and to find out more information about our podcast family. Thank you to Mark Redito for our theme music. And of course, thank you to R.N. Taylor for talking with us. You can see more of his work at r-n-taylor.com. We are still in our podcast infancy, so please go and subscribe to our show on iTunes or whatever podcast service you favor. And leave us a review telling us how much you love us and the show. Then go share us with your friends. We're always on the hunt for new listeners. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Missing Artwork or at Modern Vinyl. Thank you for listening. It's not my fault.